Okay, base case zero two nine. Listening. I like to listen to music. And I especially like to listen to music I'm dealing with. And, and when I say dealing with, I mean music I'm directing in ensembles or teaching to my combo classes or working on with my bass students or music I'm performing or looking to perform. And I do a lot of listening uh, right now. And it's on steady play in my vehicle and at my house. I'm listening to Mark Morton's recording of the Eccles Sonata in G minor the first movement I'm performing that next month and it's on all the time in my vehicle when I'm going somewhere or driving home and it's on repeat and I'm listening to it at home and I'm just absorbing the way Mark plays that piece and he does such a beautiful job but I listen to other things too and I keep playlists of various artists I have a playlist of Ron Carter a playlist of Paul Chambers I have a playlist of Christian McBride my favorite bass players. I got a playlist of just Steely Dan that I like to listen to when I'm on a road trip and just listen to that the way that music was put together and what the bass lines are doing and just in general, you know, and I want to absorb it and I want to absorb all of it, you know, and we do absorb and we, we leave that out as far as the uh, learning process of what we absorb subconsciously, you know, and I find it really beneficial. You know, this is where I've listened to something for a while, you know, a long time, right? And when I play it, a lot of it is right there. You know, a lot of the tone. I know if a note's not right because it's all built into my head at that point. I'm And when I'm listening to a recording, you know, I shouldn't have to say this, but I will. You, you want to listen to a recording of somebody that does it really well, right? But I'm listening, I'm absorbing inflections and I'm absorbing tone and I'm absorbing articulations and the shape of the melody and anything involved with the music. I've even been absorbing what the keys player is doing during certain parts. I remember when I was learning Bags and Train and I was learning Paul Chambers' three chorus solo and I absorbed in my head what the keys player was doing to accompany that solo. And I, so when I'd play it, I'd hear that accompaniment. It's very sparse. And I've absorbed it from the recording, and thus I've absorbed the player that is being recorded. So that's a good reason if you're going to absorb things. Uh, like a friend of mine says, it's all right to be a copycat. Just copy the right cat, right? I'm always surprised, though, at how little some student musicians listen to the stuff they're playing. We were working on, we're working on Star Maker by the Roy Hart, by Blue Lou Marini, but we're listening to Hargrove's version of it, and my flugelhorn player said, I've, I listened to it three times, and I thought, three times, you, you have so much to do, right? I've probably listened to that chart 10,000 times and played along with it, but and I'll be in recital lab listening to musicians and student musicians perform their pieces, you know, non-jazz pieces, you know, an aria. And I'll say, which, what recording are you listening to? And they're like, and it's really strange to me because we live in a time where virtually every recording is at your fingertips. I mean, basically all the world's knowledge is at our fingertips right now. And uh, there's no reason not to listen to stuff. You know, I'll tell the funny story that makes me seem like I'm a thousand years old, but when I was first studying this music, not all the libraries had jazz recordings and not all the record store, record store CDs, you hold on, not all the CD stores had jazz recordings, but there was this place in Chicago and they'd send you a catalog and they had everything. And you'd order and you'd send in a money order or a check and then a couple of weeks later you'd get that recording. Well, now you don't have to wait a couple of weeks and you don't have to write it, mail in a check. It's all right there on YouTube for the most part. So yeah, you've got to listen, you know. So I'll ask my student musicians, which recording of Satin Doll do you listen to? You know, I like the one Rufus Reed did where he plays the melody. You know, what, what recording of Recordame, you know, I did, that's a bass line that you must know right from one of my previous episodes and I like and mention Joe Henderson's record but I also like the record that Marcus Prentom did everything that we play we should have a seminal reference recording at least one something that you're listening to I don't care what piece of music it is uh, 
I wore out Sonny Rollins' take on Blue 7 on his saxophone Colossus record. I mean, I wore that record out. I learned the head. I learned licks off his solo, pieces of that walking line. Doug Walkins' unaccompanied walking solo line at the top of the recording. I have my students transcribe that. It's easy to hear. Every bass player should know that. You know, like I was talking about Star Maker by Roy Hargrove's version. And I've listened and played bass against that track for years. So I know it. So when I'm teaching it, I know what's happening. And we're dealing with it in combo, like I mentioned. And, and all that experience that I've had with the recording is a big help, to say the least. But back to listening, you know. I mean, it sounds like such a... Uh, strange concept you know of course I'm listening you know but when I'm talking about listening I'm talking about two different ways and they're both valuable and the first one is passive listening and I do a lot of this this is when the track is playing and it plays a lot in your background you know like I mentioned it's in the car when I'm driving it's when I'm cleaning the studio vacuuming etc and I don't think that you have to pay total attention to it that you just keep playing it and continue on what you're doing it starts sticking to you to me, that's really passive listening. You know, I'm just going to put on some Mark Morton from his solo record and drive to school or to the store or whatever and listen to it again and again and again and again. I'll put on some Mingus from that record of his, uh, um, and run on my treadmill and just let the subconscious mind absorb. It's too easy. It's such a great way to learn how to play better, how to play something better without actually having to do anything. You know, what a good way to get better at a track. You can't say too many times that you're too busy to practice if all it requires you to do is put some music in the background. And then there's the more active approach. Now, this is where I'm listening carefully, and I'm counting choruses, and I'm following changes, and I'm writing stuff down, and I'm making a sketch of a bass solo, and all these different things are happening, and I'm stopping and starting the recording, and maybe I'm just writing out the rhythm. You know, and I'm making notes to myself of how something and something I like, you know, maybe it's just a lick in a solo. Maybe it's a lick uh, in the in the tenor solo. And I'm thinking, I'm going to I'm going to take this apart and maybe do this. You know, I still don't have the bass in my hand when I'm doing that. I'm just listening, but I'm listening much more in an active way. And I'm like I said, I'm stopping and starting and rewinding and fast forwarding. And I use a couple of software tools for that that are readily available to musicians i can slow it down and i can isolate stuff and then the truly active this is where i put my bass in my hands and i start playing along with the changes or i play along with the melody you know or i start taking apart the line the melody or the bass line with my bass sometimes i do it at the piano too you know sometimes it's just easier to do that you know but having an upright bass in your hand and then trying to write on notation paper on a music stand is sometimes difficult. Sometimes it's easier just to go to the piano. And that's more active and more work, but it's effective. Spend a week with a recording of something doing all of the above to some extent. I mean, doing a lot of listening to it, singing with it. You remember that from last week? Remember how to sing with it. You know, learn how to sing with that recording. You know, writing out the lines or the line that you want, you know, and playing along with it. That's so, it, and it's fun, man. I find it fun, and I've talked to a lot of musicians about that. And it's really good practice for you, and we should be doing that since we have the capabilities of doing that, since the tracks are all right there at our availability. I mean, like most of you probably know, and I do this in my studio with my bass players, you can slow down the tracks on YouTube to to quarter speed to half speed and you can speed them up sometimes i have them do that you know and you the practice tracks that are on there that's good practice for you so check it out i'll talk to you soon mm-hmm.